Hello YouTube, today I'm in Kerbal Space Program 0.22 as you can see by this lovely new set of buildings and uh, hopefully today I'll be starting my career mode. So, uh, first of all, career mode, what do we have? Well, this is the tech tree and this is where you unlock all the new parts. So what I'm going to try and do is do essentially, to start off with anyway, one mission per video. So in this video, I'm literally just going to launch a very, very simple rocket and uh, show you around some of the, you know, the ways that stuff in point 22 works as well. So uh, this is going to be my, my first rocket and it's going to be very simple. I'm not going to try and make one of those th crazy things that decouples itself with solid boosters and things. I want to play it the way it's probably meant to be played because to be honest, I think doing stuff like that's a little bit, uh, not cheaty, but a bit stupid. Uh, so, what else can we fit on a rocket apart from some solid boosters? Well, we'll need a parachute, won't we? That's probably going to be useful. I think our Kerbals will appreciate that. And uh, maybe... Well, let's see what else do we have. Not very much, really. Um, yeah, let's just go with... Uh, no, let's go with a liquid fuel engine and let's just have maybe four of those tanks that looks good um, so yeah let's see how far we can get with this then so this is going to be a sort of introduction video to the series I don't expect it to be anything you know really long or crazy to start off with but as the missions get longer I guess the videos will get longer with them until I can't make a single video you know for one mission, I'll have to make them, you know, split them up. Uh, so anyway, you can see we've got Jebediah here on our fresh save file. And, uh, yeah, just going to turn on SAS. And hopefully, we should be able to get into the upper atmosphere with this, I think. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, see, we can even just do a crew report now. <laughs> I'll keep that data. Right, let's go and uh, see what happens. Well, this thing goes fast. I guess it's not really carrying very much weight. I'm throttling down a bit because I don't want to waste fuel, you know, pushing the air out of the way, as I always say. Um, that's just pointless, but yeah, now I'm half throttle and it's still accelerating a lot. This is pretty good. Two kilometers already. Yeah, I guess we can get reasonably far with this. Um, let's see what the crew actually has to say. <laughs> Look at Jeb's face, he's like in this. Uh, let's see what he has to say about it then. So, crew report. Yep. The shores look inviting and you watch the waves roll into the coast. Okay, we'll keep that data. And I think we'll land in the ocean and do what is called an EVA report, which is essentially where you, uh, ba you basically uh, gather some you know, you can get, gather like a sample of the surface or do that kind of thing and that's worth a lot of scientific value apparently even though they could literally just walk over there without rockets and get some data from that but uh, apparently, you know, it's worth worth a reasonable amount so we'll take a sample home as well of the water so now I'm just going to throttle up completely because I want to go as fast as I can and the air resistance isn't so big a deal at the moment. Actually I'm going to get a reasonably high apoapsis here. Uh, might even be able to make it into space. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. No, okay yeah, maybe I probably will make it into space then. That's kind of cool. Uh, I'll wait till we actually get reasonably high up and then I will do an EVA report. But first of all I'm just going to time warp a bit. So yeah, are we in space yet? Nearly in space. That's pretty good, if you ask me. Okay, so now, if I hit EVA, get Jeb out of his uh, out of his capsule. Now we can right-click on him, hit EVA report, and uh, you recorded your uh, observations about the situation. So let's keep that data then. Um, okay, so let's go get back in then and 
hit space so that those parachutes deploy as soon as possible. I'm also going to turn off SAS because it's not really very useful and cut the throttle as well if I can. There we go. Now we can time walk back down and hopefully land in the ocean quite gently hopefully. That's what I'm hoping for but I, I don't know if that'll happen. Uh, it is a very small parachute to carry this much rocket down but it should be okay. And you can see we're getting, properly getting into the atmosphere now because the ship's starting to spin around which means that it's, it's going through drag. And there we go, we've got some nice re-entry effects too. The parachute isn't on fire though, which is kind of disappointing, but I guess it's also sort of a good thing. Um, and we're coming down above the ocean so we can just time warp till we get to a, you know 500 meters above the ocean. Uh, so we don't need to worry about that because we know that that's when the parachute will deploy. So hopefully sometime soon. There we go, that's the parachute. And actually that isn't too bad. Uh, we're coming down quite gently. I think that's quite a successful first flight for the Kerbals. Um, we'll just come down nicely and then hopefully I'll be able to gather a sample of this ocean water. And uh, I'd also like to show you, as I said, well, you can see all of that got destroyed anyway. Um, if I EVA now, I can actually uh, do another, oh, I can take a surface sample. It appears to drastically increase the surface humidity of anything it touches. That's a fair enough report. I don't think a spacesuit. <laughs> yeah, let's keep that too. That's some pretty good data right there. Uh, so we'll grab it onto this and get back in again. Then we can go and hover up above the uh, altitude meter. And uh, yeah, so now we've got 34 signs. That's pretty good. We can hit recover. That's what I was going to say. Anyway, so we've hit the recover and now we have. 34.7 signs earned, but we only get 34 signs really. Uh, so now we can go to the tech tree and let's see what we can unlock. So this costs 5 signs and this will give us uh, the T400 fuel tank, the T100, the Mystery Goo containment unit, which allows us to do a few more experiments, and the TR18A stack decoupler. So that's going to be quite useful. So obviously we're going to research that because we don't really have anything else we can research. And we can also research one of these things. Um, so I don't know which one I'm going to use. I actually think this one's probably the most useful because it has radial decouplers. Um, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter that much. That one's also really useful because it has that engine which has thrust gimbling. And this one's really useful because it's got a good engine, landing struts, and radial parachutes. So I'm kind of split as to which one to get, but this one's the cheapest by a long way. This one's a bit more expensive at 18 signs, and this one's the most expensive at 20 signs. Uh, but we're going to have to go on another mission to earn any more signs anyway, so I think I'm going to go with this one. And um, we've only got 9 signs now, so we can't get anything more. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this episode, I know it was a short one, but uh, I'm going to try and keep it so it, I'm not splitting missions across or doing loads of missions in one, because I know the next mission I do will probably take a lot longer. Thanks for watching guys, if you like the video then give the video a thumbs up and a favourite if you want to, that'd really help me. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching as I said, and have a nice day.